Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Crossing Cross Television Ministry from the great city of Hermitage, Pennsylvania. And I am just amazed at the people that we cross paths with in my ministry here for 42 years, telling people about Jesus. My wife's with me and special guest today, and we're going to hear testimony as how you can help other people, and people are hurting out there today. So if you're a family out there and you need help, why? whatever, please listen to this program. And I want to thank you people so much. Last week we've been asking you just support us for $7 a month or one check for $77. We really need it because you know what? Joyce and I don't take a salary, but our, our costs are going on and we just, that's all I do about money. I don't waste any time on money. And you know, God's perfect number is seven. So just send one check for $77, we appreciate it, or whatever. We have people that buy whole programs here. And we don't spend that much time on asking money. I never have. So that's my little talk for money here today. Now, today, Joyce, we have, I think oh, we know this couple, right? Oh, yes, indeed. God blesses us with such special people. And Hallelujah. today we've got Ronald and Deborah Kozar, and they have a ministry called His Food Program. And it really is His Food Program, isn't Amen. it, Ron? Yep. So how about you two telling us a little bit about what you do and how you go Amen. about doing it. <laughs> well, that's the most important thing about the whole program is it's His Food Program. Right. And people go, what's the name of it? I go, it's His Food Ministry <laughs> because it's really His Food Ministry. But God gave me a vision probably about 16 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible tells us not to be forgetful hearers of God's Word, but effectual doers. Mm -hmm. So we need to be able to take ourselves out of our churches and do something that will impact our community. And we saw children, I mean, we don't have to go to Africa to find somebody that's starving. There's people in our own communities that are starving. I mean, like 60 million people in the United States are at the starving level, right. poverty level or less. And if not starving, not eating properly. Right, absolutely, not nutritional properly. food. Right. So according to Matthew 25, 35, Jesus came to two groups of people, those that knew him and those who didn't. <laughs> and he said that I was hungry, and you didn't feed me. Naked, you didn't close me. In prison, you never visited me. In the hospital, sick, you never come to see me. So that really touched me. I thought that is a thing that we know for sure that's gonna happen, that we will be judged according to the things we do. A lot of Christians think, especially with the grace movement now, they don't think they're gonna be judged. We are absolutely gonna be judged. We're gonna stand before the judgment seat of Christ and we're gonna give an account for every single thing we do. So coming out of that, God gave me a burden to feed people. So we started, you know, just feeding out of our church. And that's what we still do. You always got to make sure home base is, is there. So we do a food ministry that operates every single Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. And what we always say is, is it's not a handout. It's just not a gimme. It's a hand up. So we're looking for people that are like middle class America that just needs a helping hand or some people that are really struggling that need a helping hand. And what we do is we do the food ministry as an evangelistic outreach. And that's why we do it. Because hey, a fisherman got to put something on the hook. If you're throwing a hook out there with no worm on it, you're never going to catch anything. <laughs> so what we do is, is we use that Jesus took two loaves and five fish and he fed 5,000 men. So what we do is we use it to reach out into our community and develop relationships. It's an evangelistic outreach. So we ask people to give a donation the week before. They make a donation to our ministry. And what we do is we, we reserve about 30 slots. 30 is the maximum. And we'll bring those families into our ministry. And we will feed them every single Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. And what we do is we have contracts with very special vendors that really support us. And one is Gordon Food, the big food um, company. The other one is Chick-fil-A. Then we also have an agreement with Kentucky Fried Chicken that they help us with some food when they have the opportunity. Wow. And the other one is Starbucks. So them are three of the, the largest franchises in America that over the years, now we've been doing this for 15 years, but we've developed a relationship with them, and if there's any leftover food or anything like that, we have trucks that can travel and pick it up. Deborah, 
what happens is three days a week, right? So yes. Do, do you have, Ron, do you, do you have to go pick the food up? Tell me about it. Well, first of all, we couldn't do this ministry without our assistant pastor, yeah. which is Pastor Al Larrabee and Dee, his wife. So they uh, sacrificially give up their time on those days and sometimes other days and commit to the ministry. Mm -hmm. So Al goes and picks the food up. Sometimes someone will help him um, go pick that up. So he drives a truck and brings the food back. And then it, on Monday morning, they, they get the name of Sunday nights of who's participating. And like we said, it's not always um, somebody who's on assistance. Lots of times it's people with families that four or five kids, they're both working, but just okay. can't catch a break. Sure. They're above the level, can't get assistance. So they know when, when Al leaves on Monday, Dee knows how many people that we're feeding that week, how many families, and they actually uh, line that up. And then um, the two of them work together. Sometimes they have help on Saturdays, Jim and, and um, Carol Baum. Sometimes my mom has helped. We have people that come in every once in a while, but they run it. We could not do the ministry without well, we, We've their been assistance. to your church. We yes. see the huge freezers that you have yes. that you yeah. have to store. I mean, there's a yes. lot that goes on there's a lot. behind the scenes yes. that people don't even think about, but you have to keep yeah. all that food fresh and ready mm -hmm. to give away. Yeah. It, goes, I mean, it comes in and goes out that yeah. day. So you don't have to demand they come to church either. You're just doing what, you give them the word, right? Mm -hmm. Or they'll ask you, right? Yes. And that's an opportunity, which locally in Hermity, Sharon, Pennsylvania, we have this community food bank or that in Farrell and some of these places, they're doing the same thing beautifully, you know? Yes. So that's, but we freely can share Jesus. If they come in and they have yeah. an issue, we freely, there's nobody stopping us for praying with them. no government, with them. government hold yeah. over you, right? There's right? nothing like that. Yeah, and you know what? Another thing, too, I like what you said there. These people, it can be pride. Some people... They just, even though they're making thirty, forty thousand, maybe a year, mm -hmm. and four or five kids, right? Mm -hmm. If they think that they can't qualify or get rid of their pride, right? Come down and get it because you're not, you don't, you don't demand that I see your income or anything no. like that. No, and right. we work with another church, um, Pastor Matt, that's been on here before. His church, Bible Baptist Bible Church, Baptist, they support a us. A lot of their the um, people from the church come, and and you're going to hear from them, some Absolutely. of them in a little bit, yeah. their Go testimony. Ahead. So. Yeah. You know, so that, what you're saying is keep watching Crossing Paths. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You'll hear from them. Thank you. But it, here's the thing that I'd like to say. You're going to have an opportunity. Um, we're saying right now what we do, but the only way that they say a picture says a thousand words. So what we did is we asked some of our people that have been a part of our program. We asked them to share a brief testimony. And, th and that's what you're getting ready to see. You're going to see a short clip of some people that this ministry has transformed their lives. And to be honest with you, when we did the video, when we took the time to film the people, it really touched my heart because I know them, but I really don't know, I didn't know the behind the scenes stories of their lives mm -hmm. and how a church can reach out into the community and touch them. So you're gonna have an opportunity here to hear it, as they say, straight from the horse's mouth. But it's directly from the heart of these people. And you're going to hear a firsthand experience of how their lives have changed. And I want to give you the opportunity today, a thing that I want to open up the, the door for you to be a part of this because you can support the ministry. And we're going to partner up with Crossing Pass and we're going to open it up for you to support this ministry. And all we ask is for a $25 donation. And what we will do with those funds is we will plug it in and we will feed a family of four. We will be able to feed a family of four for one week. That's three days a week, not $25 a day. We're asking for a one-time donation to Crossing Pass Ministries for $25. And we, they will work with His Food Ministry and we will feed these families of four for a one-week period. We will supply a banana box full of nutritional food for them for one full week, they'll come to our church and they will receive a banana box full of nutritional food on Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. I'm telling you, my friend, this is a golden opportunity for you to be a part of a tremendous evangelistic outreach where you may be sitting at home and you can't feel like you can help anybody. You can partner with two great ministries and reach out and be able to change people's lives. So I thank you in advance for partnering with us. 
and I hope you enjoy the clip. Hi, my name is Tina and I'm the mother of five children and his food has helped me. Hi, my name is Katie. His food ministry has helped my family when we had unexpected family members move in with us. And it's also helped one of my students whose parents are not in the picture to be able to get through her week with a full belly. Hi, my name is Lori and his food ministry has helped me by saving money and, you know, just helping me out in ways I could possibly not imagine. Uh, my name is Jake. Uh, my wife and I have five kids. Uh, we did a food ministry here. Uh, it helped us tremendously with food. The uh, kids love it, my wife loves it. We all enjoy eating all the food. Hello, uh, my name is Pastor Al, and uh, this is my wife Dolores, and uh, we uh, are head of the uh, food ministry here at the Alpha Lions Den Ministries. It's called His Food Ministry. Uh, we're blessed to do this work. We've been involved in it for about five years now. Uh, we've seen lives uh, being blessed as we go through uh, each and every uh, week that we uh, serve the people. We are so glad to be able to serve the people as we do it. And, uh, uh, and I know that they are uh, blessed as well. And they, they, uh, they love the program and we love everything about the program as well. Hi, my name's Bob. Uh, my, my wife and I have two kids. Uh, six-year-olds and uh, we've been uh, participating in the food program here and it's helped us out tremendously and uh, we're able to help our neighbors too. My name is Adrian Palmer and my husband and I have been participating in his food ministry for about a year and a half. We have two little people also and um, we recently came into some big financial surprises that were not positive and uh, because of that his food ministry has helped us be able to have groceries on a weekly basis. Hi, my name is Bill Nolan. Food Ministries helped me in a great way of uh, providing some food for my family at a cheaper rate. And I am very thoughtful and help and glad that they came and helped me out and everything. And uh, that they, they're, they're really good people. Hey, welcome back. I really hope that you enjoyed that clip because like I said, that is st straight from our heart to your heart so you have the opportunity to really be a part of the ministry. You know, the Bible says that God gives seed to the sower. And a lot of times we don't know because everybody just thinks people's out for their money when they ask for a, for a donation. But we're really not doing that. We're just asking you to help us help them. So you saw Pastor Al Larrabee, you saw his wife Dolores on there. They run the food ministry for us. They're a great couple. They've been doing it for about seven years. And uh, we've been in the food ministry totally for 15, but they've really stepped up. And they really run it for us. And they're a beautiful, wonderful couple, and they put their whole heart into it, and we couldn't do it without them. You know, Ron, Deborah, you remind me being crossing paths. It wasn't for these silent witnesses behind, I call them. Mm. Amen. You, know, you talk about the Nathaniels in the Bible. There's not too much matter. Stephen, we know he got stoned to death, but some of these people that you you hear all Peter and John and all that, okay? Yeah. But some of the rest, that's what makes your ministry, right? Yes, or sir. Or your assistant pastors or the pastors that you Amen. have that you're training so that you can very well travel, you yeah. know, right? And you know, one thing too I want to bring up too because you two are not only involved, but Deborah, you're, you run in races. Now, what, what kind of races do you run in? I run in 5K races. And what's 5K? Because I'm going to come. <laughs> that's 3.1. 3.1 mile. Yeah, that's a sissy race. Which okay. Marathon racers would think. Right. That's like, she right. just ran a cancer for cancer. Yeah. This past weekend, I think. Yeah. And, and wherever the Lord leads you to is an yep, opportunity. I run right? for the cause. Yeah. And I run to cross the finish line. Yeah. Yeah. I don't run against my own. Well, I try to run. I run against my own time, yeah. I would say, because... Um, I do it as a stress reliever. Wasn't there a race recently at Buell Park in Sharon? Um, there is or one. Or there's one coming Thanksgiving. up? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Right. Oh, okay. That I'm going to come up here and do. Yep. Okay. And see, she does it just to support them financially. Uh -huh. yeah. It's just like we're giving people. She she makes the donation or pays, right. and it, ra right? it raises yes, money for cancer fun, yeah. or whatever. There's a lot of different... But there was a time that you almost couldn't run. What happened to you? There was a problem with it? Right. What was it? Um, I had a uterine fibroid. Oh boy. So, a what? Yeah, a uterine fibroid. Big one. Huge. Ten. Uh, very, ten. very, very rare. Ten pounds. Ten pounds. Mm -hmm. oh. So it was like um, running um, pregnant. So, uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, but God was faithful through that whole time. Amen. As a matter of fact, 
Um, I can't beat a lot of those times that I That's ran right. time-wise. She ran faster then. I ran faster then than what I do now. Yeah. But uh, God was faithful. Yeah. I can hardly believe it, the size of a football or, yeah. and you're sitting there yeah. and a lot of people, you know, don't want to admit that they have medical problems yeah. and you knew it and you tried yeah. every way, prayer yeah, and everything else, right? Yes. And that's another thing yes. too. We believe in doctors here. Yeah. We believe in healing, right? Absolutely. And you're a yeah. perfect example. Yeah. yeah. You know, well, when I first went and started the experience, it was five years that I dealt with this before the surgery. And, um, I know when I went to the, um, the doctor in Pittsburgh, um, he said, there's, you know, no way we have to give you this certain shot, but we don't really think it'll work. Mm -hmm. So the, the first shot I had, my church was praying even down to the little kids, which you'll meet a couple of them in one of the following shows. Aww. But, um, so we were praying and fasting at the same time I had that first shot, mm -hmm. but I was scheduled for surgery. And when I went back to see him, it had shrunk so much he couldn't believe it. So the shot he said wouldn't work, he said did work. And, um, but I said, but it was the Lord the whole time. But I, <laughs> but I said of my, yeah. but you said it wouldn't work. And my church family was praying and fasting. And, um, so I chose at that time not to, um, get it removed because we knew it wasn't cancer. And, uh, but eventually I had to, um, have it removed. Well, it would have just kept growing, wouldn't it? Um, eventually, if, once you get to menopause, yeah. it would shrink, oh. but it had gotten so large that it was never going to shrink enough that I wouldn't know that it was there, that oh, it was an wow. interference. Yeah. So, you yeah. see, that, these are part of the miracles of life, you know yeah. what I mean? Amen. You're a, we're all miracles, everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. They said that one of, one of the first things was they said that there is a lot of blood loss with this surgery, a lot of high risk, and so it was one of the reasons why we didn't do it. And when I had the surgery, and it only took about an hour and a half instead of four to six hours. Yeah, there was and, no blood loss. And it had increased within mm -hmm. the last two weeks before my surgery. It had totally increased. The doctor couldn't believe it whenever I got there. But it was just God's faithfulness because yeah. he said that I didn't lose more than two shot glasses of blood. So you must have, yeah. during this time of feeding people, yeah. You must have been carrying that. I mean, oh, yeah. Well, see, yeah, it was yeah. five years. Uh, five so years. we were still what doing. The food ministry. What I, you know, <laughs> yeah. What I'm saying, Ron, is people are so, they say they want to do something. Yeah. And they want to help something. Yeah. But they don't do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and you know, the Bible said you started out there, which I wanted to go back to Revelation, you know, mm -hmm. but we at the judgment seat of Christ. Yeah. We know that in order to go to the judgment seat of Christ, mm -hmm. you've got to be born again, according That's to right. John Amen. 3 3 and 1 Peter right. 1 23. Yeah. But there's a great white throne judgment, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's where all unbelievers are going to stand before yep. God. And they're doing some good things, maybe. Yep. But here you're doing exactly what God wants you to right. do. Yep. And you're not only doing it in the ministry, his field ministry, his food ministry, but you're also doing it when you go out there at the Buell Park, by the way, coming up here, right? Mm -hmm. Or whatever. Okay. Thanksgiving morning. Right. Now, Ron, I want to go back real quickly, too. If I remember right, you said $25 a week. Yes, sir. Three we'll feed a family a of four. How about a month? Didn't you say something uh, about it? $100. For $100, we'll take a, a family, one family. You'll know what the family is. We have families come to our ministry that we know personally. We do, we. It's just a part of building relationships. But for $100, they can feed a family of four for one whole month. And that would be three times a week. So they'd have 12 big banana boxes full. And Dawn, it's not like, and I want to say not bad about the food bank, because they have their part too. But this is good nutritional food. Like well, I said, we- get lettuce. Yeah, it's all nutritional. I mean, it's fresh produce. produce it's things meats. from Kentucky Fried Chicken. Chick-fil-A, Starbucks, Gordon Food. I mean, it's really good food. And I just think it's a great opportunity for the audience. I mean, they, they know what you stand for and, and the call for salvation. But this is a time. I mean, that verse in Matthew 25, that chapter, where it's the sheep and the goat. I mean, those are people that don't know Jesus, but there is a group of people there that know Jesus. That he said, I was hungry and you didn't feed me. And they said, Lord, when did we do this? They didn't even know. So we're just giving you an opportunity to partner with us. It's a golden opportunity for you to reach out and help us. Hey, we're rolling up our sleeves. We got volunteers, like you said. I always say teamwork makes the dream work. 
And without the pastors and assistant pastors, God has sent people to our ministry, and, and they're going to meet some, some of our other assistant pastors on the following shows. But they're just super people that God has handpicked to be a part of a ministry that's an outreach ministry. Doesn't, doesn't it make it feel good when you see a family mm. oh. coming up with yeah. five kids? Yeah. Oh. And, and just, you touch, you know, do you keep a list of the names of the people in case uh, a family? Absolutely. They so, got their names and so phone if numbers. Someone and, would want a name of a family. Is yep, that possible? Can, yep. That they could support that family by name? Absolutely. You know, so these are things that, you know, some people like to need to know, you know. Absolutely. Because, you know, we all know work's going to get you to heaven. Yep. We all know that. Mm -hmm. Yes, but sir. If you're born again, work will. See, the body without the spirit is dead, just like faith without works is dead also. Amen. So that in James, okay? Amen. But however, we have an opportunity here today to partner with their ministry. Crossing paths, not worry about money. I'm just telling you, we've been here now for 18 to 20 years. Amen. Never missed a payment. I've been here with my wife now, my current wife here, Donna, was with me before. Then I met this buddy guy here, you know, and even though he's still a not converted to Steelers yet, i got to say that, <laughs> but uh, he's been a Good blessing course. to me. I know I've been a blessing to him. Amen. I've met Frank yes. Rocco through him, another Amen. guy. So how many people that I've met, it's an amazing opportunity today. Now I want to turn, ask you one more question, Ron. When these people come in, okay? Yes, sir. Are they, they might not be hurting financially because they have five right. kids, yeah. but spiritually. You discern sometime when they come to you. Well, and take yeah, that, that's the, the evangelistic part is the biggest part for us. I mean, it's our volunteers that are there. It's me. It's Deborah developing relationships with these people. But like I said, the audience had uh, the ability and the opportunity to hear those testimonies. Yeah, sure. What they just heard on the show is a phenomenal example of the outreach of this ministry because you heard it right from the people. You heard how it helped their families and helped their children. And the one lady got pregnant. They were in, in tough financial needs anyway. And then God blessed them with another child. And it just, it's really, really helped people. And it makes you feel good. I mean, as a pastor, as a ministry, I mean, we're in Derry, Pennsylvania. If you, if you need to know the address, it's 716 West 4th Avenue. I mean, you could come visit us anytime. Derry, PA. Derry, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. But you'd send all the funds to Crossing Pass Ministries, and I'm, I'm sure that they'll know how to do that through, through the website of Crossing Pass, or you could call in, and they'll give you instructions on how to do that. Now, what's your hours of your church now? 24-7. <laughs> they let me take a nap every now and then. But Wednesday night, uh, we have a Bible study that starts at 6.30. The worship starts at 6.30, and uh, we're done there at 8 o'clock. And then Sunday, we have, well, Saturday night, we have a worship time yeah. now that's just yeah. phenomenal at our church yeah. that we just bathe, bathe in God's presence. And that's from 7 o'clock till 8, 8.30 Saturday evening. And then Sunday, we have our service that starts at 9.30, and we're done with that at 11 o'clock. Now, I want to show you something. Isn't it amazing? I picked up this book today, Miracles. <laughs> now... I'm going to hold this up. This book is miracles. Mm -hmm. You're a Amen. miracle, right? Amen. <laughs> yeah. We and all sometimes are... it doesn't happen how you want it to be. Because yeah. I would have loved, I said, Lord, if you just take this away, everybody knows that everybody in the community knew I had it. If you would just miraculously yeah. take it away, what a miracle. But Amen. He did it his way. Yeah, so that's yeah. a miracle. And I'm going to throw something out here for people in the future. I know that these programs are pre programmed sometime, but. There's something coming from your church. Mm. A five-year-old preacher. Oh, Amen. Yeah. So oh. watch the next couple of weeks. That's right. And you're going to see. You're going to say, "Wow! If that little boy can do that, Amen. why can I open up my mouth Amen. and tell somebody? Not about your church. Don't tell them. You tell them about Jesus. Jesus. And uh, well, Bruce his father. His father loves. was on the testimonies. Mm -hmm. His father was on there. That's how they came through the church. Yes. So there, there's a perfect illustration. Now, what can I say? Don't believe me. Don't believe Ron or his wife or Joyce. I challenge you. Amen. Pick up the Bible. Amen. Yes, if you can, if you can't pick it up, then you better find out why. Why? Because here's where my Bible was at Christmas. And I was a decent man, B.C., it wasn't decent, but I was a man with a mask on, mm -hmm. like everybody. But today, I'm standing in front of you and telling you that Jesus is real. And here's Amen. a book. 
We're going to go. It's, mir- it's funny that when you talked about miracles, you didn't know I had this. Here's a book that I'm telling you that you can have, send a donation to the ministry. Now, I also have something in my pocket here. And if you want a Bible, it's free. We've given over 50,000 Bibles since I've been Amen. saved in this Hallelujah. ministry. We don't charge them. The freight there, you want one of that? Call that telephone number on the screen. But the most important thing is, do you know Jesus? I mean, not get rid of that pride like I did, or a pro football player did, or my wife, or whatever you want to call it, and ask Jesus to come into your life. There's no such sinner's prayer. Amen. Romans 10 and 9 and 10 said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved with the mouth confession made, the heart believeth. Amen. It's simple. I'm telling you people, but pride comes in there. I've been this and I've been that. Ask Jesus today, Lord, mm. become Lord of my life. Forgive Amen. me for my sins right now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. I'm born again. John 3, 3, 1 Peter 1, 23, John 1, 12. To all those receive him, gave me power to become sons of God, even to those who believe on his name. 724-981-7777. Amen. one 985 God loves you, but Jesus loves you too. Amen. Hi, my name is Pastor Ronald Kozar. I'm a former NFL football player with the New England Patriots and also with the Detroit Lions. But I struggled with going blind and being overweight. So if you struggle with weight loss, issues with your eye, arthritis, pains in your neck, lower back, or your knees. I know that Freezor has helped me and it could also help you. Please go to our website or dial that 1-800 number and get your order placed today.